Last week I had a friend um, that came and visited from South Carolina, a close friend of mine, and he's a pastor, and we were looking on Facebook, and, um, and there was another church that posted um, a- an Easter message, He is Risen, and we, it kind of caught us off guard because that's Easter, right? Not Palm Sunday, and so we were kind of like, wait a minute, that's, that's out of place, but, but today I want to talk to you about the fact that I don't think that should be out of place for us. I don't think that the celebration that we have today should be a one-time thing, um, but that it should continue on every week throughout the year, every day throughout the year, uh, because Christ is risen. And and I love Easter Sunday, and it's really fun to have lots of people here and to sing together. The energy is great, and and it's, I'll I'll be honest with you, it's fun to preach to a lot of people. That's That's a fun thing. Sometimes I think we, we fall into the, um, the mistake of thinking that Easter is like Red's opening day. I had the opportunity to go to Red's opening day, you know, several weeks ago. And, and you know, it's that first game of the year and everybody's there. The place is packed and it's exciting and every hit is huge and everything that happens is huge. And then um, how many of you have been to a Red's game in the last week? Yeah, Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I'm afraid we, we treat Easter like we treat Red's opening day. Um, but, but today I want you to understand something really important, and that's this. Easter is the celebration that in Christ we have victory today, tomorrow, and for the rest of eternity. And so we've got good news to live by, to proclaim today, but it's not just today, it's every day. And so I, I want to thank you for being here, but I want to ask you, to rejoice every day in the victory that we have in Christ. Because we don't just get one opening day a year. We don't, we don't just get, I don't know how many victories the Reds will have this year or how many exciting games, but we have a lot more victory to celebrate than that. And so, so thank you for being here. And, and I just, I, I'm just excited to be in God's presence as I am every week. Um, today we're going to follow up on what we talked about last week. We've been working through this series called Follow Me. And the idea is we've been looking at the teachings of Jesus to see what it means for us to follow as disciples of Christ. And so we've been looking at this. And last week we were, we were looking at, um, at John's Gospel, um, chapter 14. And, and Jesus was teaching his disciples and he said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And then he said some tough things to him. He said, in just a little bit, I'm going to be leaving you, but don't worry, I'm going to send my spirit. And so, so Jesus is coming to this time. This is towards the end of his earthly ministry. And, and what we're going to be in John 16 today, but this is kind of the, the same discourse here. And, and so Jesus knows that the time is coming for him to go to the cross. He's been with these disciples for three years. He's done miracles. He's, he's done really cool things. They've seen the power of Christ at work. They've seen people healed. They've, they've seen all these different things. And they've learned from him day after day. And, and they've been walking with Jesus. But Jesus knows that that time is coming to an end. And so as we get into John 16 today, Jesus is really preparing his disciples for what's to come. And I feel a little bit weird talking to you about something that happened before the resurrection, but, but you'll get it here in a little bit. Jesus is preparing his disciples for the days to come, not just the next few days, but the days to come for the rest of their lives. And so just to cover chapter 16, to get us up to where we are, in verse 1 he says, I have talked to you, I have told you these things so that you will not fall away. He's had these disciples following him every day for three years, a little over three years, and they've been following him faithfully, and he says, listen, he knows what's coming, and he says, I tell you all of this so that you will not fall away, and then in verse 5, he says again, I'm leaving, I'm going to go back to the one who sent me, to the Father, to God, and verse 7, he says, it's for your own good that I go away, because if I go away, I send my spirit. In verse 16, he, he talks about the resurrection. He says, soon you will see me no more, but then you will see me again a little while later. And he talks about the, the resurrection. He foreshadows it. 
In verse 20, he talks about when he leaves and he says, when I leave, you will mourn and, and you will be sad, but the world's going to rejoice because the world is going to think that it has victory. And then in, in, in verse 22, he says, now is your time of grief when I leave, but I will see you again and you will rejoice. We're going to come back to this one. At this point, the disciples are starting to think that they've got it. They start to think, yeah, okay, we've been with you. And, and Jesus tells a lot of parables and teaches with a lot of stories. And sometimes they didn't get it very well. But the disciples have been walking with him for over three years. And now he's teaching them plainly. He's saying, I'm going to go, but I'm going to come back. And he's telling them all these things. And the disciples, in verse 29, start to think, yeah, we got this. We know what you're saying. They say, yeah, now we get it. Now we believe. Now we're there. And, and, and sometimes I think we get there in the church where we follow Jesus and we walk with Jesus and we experience Jesus and we experience God acting in our lives and, and we can get to a point that we think, hey, I'm finally here. And that's where the disciples were. I got it. I believe. I'm, I'm all in. And that brings us to John 16, 31 to 33. And Jesus says, do you now believe, Jesus replied, a time is coming in fact, in fact has come when you will be scattered, each to your own home. And listen to these next words, you will leave me all alone, yet I am not alone for my father is with me. And he goes on, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So Jesus knows that he's coming to the end of his time. He knows that the disciples are going to walk through difficult times. He says as much right here. He says, you think you've got it, but you don't because when I leave, when I'm arrested, you're going to scatter. You're going to be scared. You're going to run, and, and you're going to fail me. That's did you hear that in there? Jesus says, you're going to leave me all alone in my time of need. And so he says, the day is coming. You think you've got it, but, but you don't. And then he says, I've told you these things so that you may have peace. That doesn't seem like the kind of thing that gives us peace when we say, you're going to fail, you're going to struggle, you're going to be scattered. He says, in this world, you will have trouble. Once again, that's not a peaceful thing to tell people, but, but the last line is, Take heart, I have overcome the world. So the first part of this is just crazy to me. The first part of this where he says, do you now believe? The disciples, they're sitting back, they've got it, they're, we finally got it, Jesus, and, and, and we're going we're gonna to be strong now, and we're going to do what you need us to do, and we're not going to fail anymore. And Jesus basically says, no, you're going to blow it. You're going to scatter. You're going to leave me all alone and you know what blows my mind about this whole thing? Is that Jesus, think about this, Jesus has walked with these disciples. Jesus has been with them and taught them. He has told them of this day many times. He's warned them about it. And they think they're going to get it, but Jesus knows that they are going to fail. And not just that, Jesus knows that they are going to leave him all alone but he's still coaching them. He still says, I, I tell you all this so that in me you may have peace. Do, do you hear what's happening here? Jesus is talking to his disciples who he knows are going to blow it, who he knows are going to leave him in his time of need, and he says, I want you to have peace. Think about this a little deeper. Jesus knows that he's going to the cross. He knows that he's going to be left all alone and ultimately he's going to die an excruciating death and he says, have peace in me. Man, what does that tell us about Jesus? What does that tell you about Jesus? What kind of God when people abandon him and when people turn their backs on him, when people leave them all alone, when people fail, what kind of God is still focused on helping them 
and giving them peace. What king do you know that has ever tolerated people turning their back on him? What king do you know that has ever been okay with his people failing him? But Jesus says, in me you will have peace Take heart, for I have overcome the world. And so I ask, what kind of God, what kind of king does this? Let me tell you what kind of king. This is good news today. A king and a God that loves you and that is for you 100%. Jesus' whole mission was for us. Not so he could be some great king, not so he could get worldly recognition. Jesus' mission was for us to redeem us, to give us life. And so even knowing that the disciples are going to blow it, even knowing that things are going to fall apart, even knowing he's headed to a cross, he says, I say all these things so that in me you may have peace. Man, it's easy for us to look at the disciples and say, How'd they not get this? How did they not see that Jesus was all about them? How did they not see the signs and the warnings? And it's easy for us to look at the disciples. We've talked a lot in this series about how the disciples got to walk with Jesus every day, and we don't physically see Jesus every day walking with us. And so we look at the disciples and we're like, how can you blow this? But then I think about us. We know the outcome We know what happened after Jesus was crucified. We know that the disciples left him, and we know that that he died on a cross, but he was raised from the dead and gained victory. And so it's easy for us to say, man, how'd they not get it? But man, how do I not get it? How do I miss this? How do I come on Easter Sunday and get all pumped up and then experience troubles and difficulties and And forget, but I've got good news. Jesus died on the cross knowing that we, we would fail. Jesus died on the cross knowing that we would turn our backs on him. And Jesus died on the cross ultimately to give us victory. And so Jesus died and rose again victorious for the very people who were headed for defeat. That's good news today. That's really good news today. I mean, I grew up in the church. My dad was a pastor. I, I've been in the church my whole life, and, and i got to be honest with you, there have been plenty of times that, that I've blown it. There have been plenty of times where I lacked faith. There have been plenty of times where I got all excited about Jesus, and then something bad would happen, and all of a sudden, it was like I scattered. But Jesus died and rose again so that we could have victory. We will fall short. We will fail to be faithful sometimes, but Jesus offers us victory anyways. And the good news is this. The church doesn't depend ultimately on us who are failures or or even these disciples. The church doesn't ultimately depend on, on what we do, but on what God has done in Christ And so we may fail, we may blow it, we may scatter at times. But today we celebrate victory. We celebrate that our God is greater. And so that moves to the second issue. When we talk about failing, when we talk about falling, the the second thing that we hear is we we see in verse 33, he says, "I, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace, but in this world you will have trouble. Take heart, I have overcome the world. Why is Jesus telling this to his disciples? If he knows they're going to fall away, if he knows they're going to blow it, if he he knows they're going to fail, why is he saying this? It's because he wants us to have peace. So he says, you may fail, you may fall away, and then he says, by the way, you're going to have trouble. It's not just that you're going to blow it, it's that you're going to be in some trouble. You're going to have a hard time. Listen, as a pastor... With, with a bunch of people here today, the easiest thing I could do would be to tell you that if you'll just believe in God and if you'll just raise your hand and say, I love Jesus, then everything in your life is going to be perfect. You're going to get rich. You're going to have the perfect family. You're gonna, all your dreams are going to come true. And that's the easy thing. But the truth is this. Jesus tells us that in this world, 
we will experience trouble. That's probably not a real popular message with you. Some of you are experiencing trouble right now. Some of you are feeling pain and hurt. Jesus says, in this world, you will experience trouble. Jesus knows what they're walking into. He knows that they're going to scatter. He knows that that Peter's going to deny him. He knows that all these things are going to happen. He knows that even after his resurrection and when he goes back and ascends to heaven, he knows that these disciples are going to lead the church and they're going to be persecuted and they're going to be hurt and they're, they're ultimately, some of them are going to die for what they believe. But Jesus doesn't tell them a lie. He tells them the truth that in this world you will have trouble. And so here we are on Easter Sunday, and we're all pumped up, and we're singing, and yeah, get up and tell us all the good news, preacher. And so I, I got a lot of good news for you today, but, but I also have this. In this world, you will have trouble. I don't care how pumped up you are. I don't know how great your life is going today, but when you walk out of here tomorrow, the next day, I don't know when it'll be, but you will experience difficulty. It could be relational It could be losing something that you love. It could be sickness. It could be things that are out of your control. In this world, you will experience trouble. The resurrection does not mean that we are less likely to experience pain. But look at the second half of this. It makes us less vulnerable when we do experience pain. So, The resurrection, the cross, Jesus' death and his resurrection doesn't mean that everything's going to be perfect, but what it means is that we can take heart because Jesus has overcome the world. And so today, that's good news. Bad news, you will experience trouble. Good news, it won't defeat you if you live in Christ. That's good news today. And so Jesus says, in me, you can have peace. You may have trouble, but in me, you can have peace. He doesn't say automatically you're going to get peace. I just give you this gift and I walk away and no matter what happens, you have peace. Jesus says, in me, you will have peace. In other words, if we follow Jesus, if we have faith, if we believe, even if we struggle, if we will be faithful and we will believe, Then Jesus, in Jesus, we will have peace. It goes back to last week. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is our key to walking through this life and walking through the trouble we face and living in the resurrection. It's Jesus. The only way we can experience real peace in this world is through Jesus. Please hear me. There's some of you in here that think you're going to find peace in other places. The only place you will find real peace is in Jesus. Because whether I tell you it or not, whether you've experienced it or not, you're going to have trouble. Whether you come to church, or it's not just a church, it's not just church people that have trouble, it's everybody. But we have the hope of the resurrection. And so in Christ, we have peace. I have overcome the world. Take heart, I have overcome the world. See, See, Jesus gives us a joy that can't be taken Because it's not dependent on us or our circumstances. It's already taken care of on the cross and in the empty tomb. And so we can have joy that will not be taken. This is more good news. Nothing, nothing can take your victory in Christ. If you will live in the Spirit, you will experience victory no matter what you face. And so in Christ, we can face anything and Jesus says take heart the the other some of the other translations say be of good cheer and so hear this again Jesus say I'm leaving you're going to fail me you're going to struggle you're going to blow it people are going to come after you even in chapter 16 it says people are going to try to hurt you and they're going to think that they're doing the right thing by trying to hurt you he says you're going to struggle but In Christ, we can take heart, we can be of good cheer, because I have overcome the world. Today we have victory, not because we're great, not because everything's going to go perfect, not because we've earned it, but we have victory because Christ is risen victorious, and nothing can take that. And and so the message today isn't just that, 
that Jesus won and there's victory and we get to enjoy a nice victory parade or Disneyland for the rest of our lives or any of that stuff. The message is this, in this world, you're going to experience trouble. But take heart because Christ has risen and Christ has overcome the world. Or as, as it's put in 1 John chapter 4, 4, he says, the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. So you will have trouble, but guess what? The one that's walking with you, the spirit that we talked about last week, the spirit of Christ, the spirit of truth will be in you if you accept Christ. And the one who is in you is greater than anything you can experience of trouble. And so Jesus is speaking to his disciples. He's knowing they're going to fall. He's knowing they're going to fail. He's knowing that they're they're not going to be perfect, but in him they can have peace. And the good news is this, today, because of what we celebrate today, because of the resurrection, we can live at peace. And the disciples are are perfect proof of this. The disciples are, are great proof of this because if you think about it, at this point when Jesus is talking to them, they haven't really experienced much difficulty. They've been walking with Jesus and everything's been pretty good. And even when Jesus is arrested, They don't fall away. I mean, they're not experiencing terrible things. They scatter. They're okay. But but the truth is, the disciples, after Jesus is arrested, after he dies on the cross, after he's resurrected, and then he ascends into heaven, they face more difficulty than we could ever imagine. We have it easy, guys. We come to church and we go home and nobody thinks much of it. But these disciples would lead the early church and they would be persecuted and they would have trouble and and they would ultimately, many of them, give their lives for what they believed. But after the resurrection, everything is different. Everything is different. Why is everything different? Two things. Number one, because they saw. Dale talked this morning about the importance of seeing the resurrection, seeing Jesus. It's different because they've seen Jesus resurrected. This guy who's walked with him, who's who's told him what's going to happen, all these things. He said, I'm going to leave, I'm going to come back. And guess what? He left and he came back. And they saw it. So they believed. And so they they saw the resurrection. But the second thing, they were filled with the Spirit. Jesus says, when I leave, the Spirit will come, and that Spirit will empower you to live the way you need to live. And so these disciples are are perfect examples of the fact that before, they scattered. Why did they scatter? Because at that point, Jesus was just a really good teacher who had done some cool miracles and was a, a great rabbi to them. But once they saw the resurrection... Once they experienced the Spirit coming upon them, they could face anything. And so the good news is this. Jesus' movement started with a group of disciples who were pretty much failures. Jesus' movement started with this group that he says, you are going to blow it. You're going to miss it. You're going to leave me all alone. That's not a good way to start a movement, is it? That's how this whole thing started. And and through the years, many kingdoms have tried to wipe out Christianity. Many kings and many kingdoms and many powers have tried to overcome God's kingdom. Guess what? We're here today. We're here today because Christ has victory. In some places today, Christianity is outlawed. In some places, you could be jailed or even die for being a Christian. And guess what? In those places, God is moving and God's kingdom is growing. You know why? Because in Christ, we have victory. I have overcome the world. Throughout history, Christians have been persecuted and and there are many who have tried, but nothing can overcome God's kingdom. And so today we join together and we're excited and and I don't want to deflate the balloon and tell you that you're going to experience trouble and I don't want to deflate the balloon and say you're not going to be perfect and and you're probably going to have days that, that you miss it and that you blow it. But I want to tell you today that you have a Savior that was willing to go to a cross even when he knew, even when he knew that you were going to blow it. 
And you have a Savior that not only went to the cross, but you have a Savior that was raised from the cross that had victory over sin and death and gives you peace, gives you a way, gives you truth, gives you life. And so today we celebrate that Jesus has overcome the world. And today I want to ask you to live a resurrected life. I want to ask you to, to give everything you have. I want to ask you to experience the resurrection today. In verse 22, the band's going to come up as we finish this up, but in verse 22, if we go back a little bit in the scripture, it says, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again. This is when he's talking about the resurrection. I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. Listen, I... I appreciate you being here today. I appreciate the excitement and the celebration. I, I appreciate everyone singing, and I appreciate the fact that we can come and we can celebrate together. But, but Easter is more than just a once-a-year thing. Easter is more than just a, a, a championship parade. Easter is more than opening day. Easter is more than any of that. Easter is a call to live every day in the resurrected Christ. And as followers of Christ, we should live as people who are resurrected. We should take heart. He says, take heart, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. That doesn't mean, hey, be of good cheer, take heart on Easter. That means every day, walk with Jesus and be of good cheer, even if you're going through a difficult time, even if you're having trouble at work, even if you are feeling a great loss, even if you're having relational trouble, even if you've got something going on in your life that feels like it's, it's taking over. Jesus says, take heart. Because I have overcome the world. Today I want to invite you. I want to invite you to celebrate victory. But I want to invite you into a lifestyle of victory. I want to invite you to take heart and not let the things around you tear down your faith. But to walk every day for Jesus. And that happens by experiencing the resurrected Savior today. By seeing the resurrected Savior, and two, by being filled with the Spirit. And so we should live confidently in Christ. We should get up now and I, go ahead, stand up. And we should sing and we should celebrate victory. But, but this shouldn't be the end. We should walk every day as people who serve the resurrected Savior. Let's sing together.